Greetings. Welcome to the third episode of Teaching Techniques. In this episode, we will be exploring the world of aftermarket upgrades. Upgrades certainly increase the cost of a modeling project, but not necessarily the difficulty level. Both photo etch and resin subjects will be covered, and the comparison of the two types should assist you in deciding which way you might like to go, and in some situations you may wish to use both, budget permitting. Some elements of the upgrade sets are difficult due to small components, which require gluing. This applies both to photo etch and resin. Resin requires a great deal of fine detail painting. However, on the flip side, the detail painting, and especially the subsequent weathering, can be greatly assisted due to the crispness of the moulding and the raised surfaces. Generally speaking, the colour photo etch sets are probably the easiest to use due to the limited painting required. Whilst the photo etch is the easier option, in my opinion it has a considerably inferior level of detail to the resin counterparts, with the exception of the finely printed placards and other dials and writing found in cockpits. Some of the most impressive upgrades available on the market are the resin replacement engines. However, it is unfortunate that in many situations, a good portion of the hard work ends up hidden beneath panels. Many models do provide the possibility to open up the engine bay to display the finished masterpiece, or alternatively, they can be placed next to the aircraft as part of a diorama, usually on an engine mount. It is important to ensure that any holes where other parts are to be attached are clean from any excess resin. To this end, it is vital if you wish to spare yourself unnecessary hardship that all the parts are first test fitted before any glue is applied. As mentioned earlier, the best way to remove the grey resin parts from the blocks is to use a micro saw. With larger parts, it is necessary to saw the block from various angles to as close to the centre as possible. Ensure that you cut a few millimetres away from the part itself, just in case you don't saw straight and accidentally saw through the part itself. It is worthwhile to consider whether you wish to remove the larger components from their casting blocks prior to painting or after everything is attached and painted. This is usually done on a case-by-case -case basis. However, my preference is to remove all the casting blocks at the start, unless it is in a convenient location to assist in holding the part in a clamp during the painting process. Once the excess resin is removed, it is necessary to smooth and clean up the part precisely down the line that is required. Using a fresh blade for this purpose will give you the best result. The same process is applied to all the smaller parts and care should be taken when holding the parts so as not to apply too much pressure on delicate detail and secondly, not to allow the part to fly out of your hand too often. This is especially true when dealing with very small parts and is worthwhile to have a plastic mat beneath your feet if working in a room with carpet. Once all the parts are in place, painting can commence. It is worthwhile to note that some of the wires have not been added at this stage as they will get in the way of painting. Also, they are photo etched parts made from copper to simulate copper wire and therefore do not need to be painted. The base colours are now applied followed by detailed painting with a fine paintbrush. The 
wash applied to the cylinder heads is Tamiya's enamel wash, chosen due to its thinned consistency, which allows it to get into all the recesses without affecting the raised surfaces. An acrylic wash is chosen for the grey base coat and is subsequently thinned and worked around with a paintbrush. Each time the brush is used to remove excess wash, it is wiped on a paper towel. A grey wash is now applied to the matte black covers to give some contrast. Once again, any excess is removed using thinners and a paintbrush. Using a fine brush, Chips and scratches are now applied to various places on the engine to simulate wear and tear sustained whilst undergoing maintenance by the ground crew. The main focus is on the bolts as well as the various edges. Oil stains are now added to simulate the extensive use that this subject would have experienced. A Second World War inline piston engine is very different to that of a radial engine. Here we have Edward's example of a Daimler-Benz 601. As before, the engine is built prior to any painting. However, in this case, all the wires have been installed as they are unlikely to get in the way. The engine will eventually be mounted to the machine gun support superstructure. The cross members holding the engine in place are not attached at this point as it will impede painting. As with all resin parts, the undercoat is applied using an airbrush. The engine is sprayed with its base colours and then the exhaust stacks are masked off and sprayed. The fine detail is now painted, again using a fine paintbrush, making sure that care is taken not to get paint on other parts. The main engine block is now weathered with a grey wash, which is then moistened with thinner and spread in a downward motion. This simulates streaks of grime accumulated through use and exposure. The rear components, which were sprayed with aluminium metalliser, are now weathered using a thin enamel wash, which is allowed to run into the grooves.
final parts are now painted, including bolts and wires. The exhaust stacks are weathered using the dry brushing technique with rust paint. Resin jet engine upgrades are significantly different compared to the piston era aircraft. The value in obtaining these lies in the crisp detail that can be found on the exterior of the engine exhausts rather than any detail within. Here we have the burner module being painted. The burnt metal ridges are painted a dark emerald green. Again, this is based on reference photographs. If you're pressed for time, you can probably skip this painting stage as it is unlikely to see the light of day. The real unfortunate thing about jet engines is that the vast majority of all the work you do ends up deep within the body of the model where nobody can see. The only way to avoid this is to display the engine next to the aircraft, which is not always a preferable choice. The next part is the internal element of the nozzle. This is quite intricate and detailed compared to the plastic part. Once again, the base colour is burnt metal. This is followed by steel in the inner parts. The mechanisms are now dry brushed using aluminium. This is done carefully, ensuring that the other parts do not get any paint on them. Once this is done, the outer ring is now sprayed with aluminium metalliser. Now the whole array is given a very thin coat of translucent black smoke. The exterior of the engine is the last part to be painted on the model. This is done after the decals are applied and the final coat of matte varnish. Ideally, the area that the metalliser will cover should have been masked off after the undercoat was applied, as the metalliser reaches its full visual potential if applied to a clean, smooth surface with a high gloss sheen to the undercoat. The reason for the application of the metalliser at the end is primarily due to the fact that there should be no other varnishes applied over the top. Once the two shades of metalizers have been applied, the next step is to carefully dry brush the exterior panels. The end result that is being sought is for the majority of the flat surfaces to have been subject to the dry brushing whilst leaving the base colours near the panel edges. Several different shades of aluminium and steel are used to give variation to the panels.
Once the dry brushing is complete, a series of washes are now applied over the top to add more colour variation. This is capped off with a black wash and some black pigments applied to the interior of the exhaust and the outer edges. That's all for this episode of Scale Model Cinema. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again in the future. Cheers.